Are you all enjoying uh, Bristol Birthplace of Country Music as a venue? Has it been okay? Good. Good. I, it was risky for me asking in this in this venue like this, but I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It seems like everybody's been having a good time. That again is Josh Littleton, everybody, our engineer who's been helping out all week. Does a great job. Another thing of note I want to mention, uh, we've got, we're, we've been shooting some videos on the side up in the studio, and we're going to do sort of a, uh, we're going to do a banjo gathering series of musicians playing in different styles. So that's something to look for on our Facebook page in the next week or so. Uh, should be a pretty cool kind of condensed series of, uh, of various banjo stylings. The other important thing I forgot to mention, you guys are as much a part of this show as all the musicians. Make sure to hoot and holler. I know, I know you're not that rowdy of a bunch, but come on. Tonight you're gonna be very, very rowdy. Yeah, oh. See, I was, I was testing you. I know, I know you're rowdy. Thank you for tuning in to Radio Bristol. Chris Trulson here. And we are, we've got a very special evening of some wonderful, wonderful programming. Uh, all week we've, we've been celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Banjo Gathering and have folks from far and wide here in Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia to celebrate. <laughs> See? To celebrate the, com the complexity that is the banjo. Uh, and it's really just been such a, a wonderful thing to have all these folks coming into town uh, to celebrate the history of the banjo. For folks who don't know, Banjo Gathering uh, clearly has been going on for 20 years. is uh, truly a celebration of uh, scholastic exchange regarding the banjo and its, its complexity. Uh, and so we've, we've had a wonderful start. The things kicked off this Thursday. Tonight, we have a performance celebrating the diversity of, of the banjo. Of course, uh, banjo offers so many distinct styles, and we have many of those people here tonight to show us uh, kind of a condensed uh, narrative of what the banjo can do. And so it's going to be a wonderful night of programming. I want to mention um, the, the Banjo Gathering kind of came about to be here in Bristol, Virginia through a good friend of mine, Greg Adams, uh, in conversation. We were to, yeah. Big hand for Greg Adams. Uh, speaking with Greg, they were, they were, he mentioned the fact that uh, they were looking for a place to celebrate the 20th anniversary. And, um, you know, I, I thought the birthplace of country music would be a perfect place to do that. And luckily enough, uh, through some convincing and some arm prying, it worked out. So we're all here in Bristol celebrating the 20th anniversary. And everybody's pretty excited about that, right? Yeah! So we're going to jump right on into things. Uh, I'm going to welcome Greg Adams to the stage, archivist at the Smithsonian Center for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage. He's been involved with the Banjo Gathering for many, many years. Everybody, Greg Adams. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the Banjo Gathering, the only event to focus on the banjo as a historical, cultural, and design object. And since 1998, we've been coming together to explore the complexities of this incredible instrument. Tonight, I'd like to share with you uh, several pieces that I've been exploring from both the 18th and 19th centuries. And I'm playing it on my reproduction 1850s banjo that was built by a good friend named Jim Hartle. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
so part of this exploration for me is, is on one hand being able to come to the gathering every year and to be able to experience the sense of community that we create around the material culture, the ephemera, the collectors, the researchers, the musicians, and the instrument builders. And what we've discovered along the way in this journey is that embedded within this instrument is not only a sense of community from, that can be built from one generation to the other, but also the complexities of the American experience. How do we explore the banjo to, to look at America's history of slavery and racism and exploitation and appropriation on one hand, but then on the other hand, the innovation, the resilience, the triumphs that are also found throughout the history of this instrument. The first piece that I played for you was a tune called Pompey Ran Away, a Negro jig from a 1782 tune book. It's a tune like that that gives us the beginnings of the insights into the, the musical cultures that exist throughout the history of the banjo. The next piece that I'd like to play for you, perhaps a medley, uh, is also looking at um, the syncopation that can show up in these early banjo tunes. So here's a little piece for you called Whoop Jamboree. exploring the possibilities of what this music can do, but I also can see the things that, that really drive us to explore the music in ways that we can really feel the changes and how they've, how they've shaped themselves over time. So the last piece that I want to play for you is a tune, um, well, let's see, what I just did was from the 1850s, mid-1850s, and now I'd like to jump ahead to the 1880s uh, with another piece called The Far South Reel. music, I want you to open your ears, open your eyes to the great variety of music, the great variety of tunes and techniques and repertoire that you're about to hear. And with that, I would like to welcome to the stage our good friend, Adam Hurt, and he will introduce the rest of the ensemble. For those of you that don't know Adam, in addition to teaching claw hammer banjo and teaching old time fiddle, uh, he does amazing work at banjo camps throughout the United States and, and reaches people throughout the world. And Adam, as you sit down, uh, please introduce the people that you're with. I certainly will. Thank you, Greg. Give a round of applause.
Thank you very much. I'm proud to be joined here by Beth Williams Harkness on the guitar. And by Bob Carlin on the banjo. Yes, indeed. We'll hear from them in a moment. So it's a real honor to get to play at the 20th anniversary of the banjo gathering and just to be here as well among so many esteemed colleagues and so many good friends. Even though my participation in the gathering over the years has been sporadic at best, this event has had a major impact, many major impacts actually, on my musical life. And this instrument that I'm holding now, this particular gourd banjo, embodies one of those major impacts. I met the maker of this instrument, David Hyatt, at the fifth banjo gathering, back when it was held in Williamsburg. And playing this instrument has changed the way that I hear music. It really has. I feel very lucky to get to play it. And I just don't believe that I would have encountered this instrument or met David had it not been for the gathering. So very grateful right now. I'm going to play for you a Kentucky piece on it, if I can eliminate a bit of climate control induced buzz. Well, we can call it percussion, can't we? This is called John Riley the Shepherd. It comes from wonderful fiddler from that great state, Art Stamper. and I love the melting pot that is the banjo and its music. So to that end, we thought we'd pull something from the and now for something completely different category and play a pair of Irish tunes that we've had some fun adapting to claw hammer banjo and finger style guitar. I got both of these tunes from the playing of Liz Carroll, one of my favorite fiddlers in any genre. Just fantastic music she always makes. The first is a traditional tune called The Old Maid of Galway. 
And the second is one of Liz's original compositions, which she calls Lizzie in the Low Ground. <laughs> yeah, and any old-timer bluegrass musicians out there might hear hints of the Billy in the Low Ground family of tunes in that one. Thank you. 
thank you very, very much. For our last number, we wanted to get Bob Carlin up, who has been a banjo hero of mine for a very long time. Always such a treat to hear him play. For a string band style number, I'll play a little bit of fiddle. Beth will stay on her trusty Santa Cruz there, and we'll play for you a tune from Texas called Porter's Reel that we learned from our friends Howard Rains and Tricia Spencer. Thanks again for listening. Bob Carlin. Keep it going, keep it going. Well, we would like to now welcome to the stage, let me get out of your way. Uh, would you please welcome our good friend Jake Blunt? He's an old time banjo and fiddle. Uh, teacher, musician, traveling uh, on an international scale. And uh, this was his first banjo gathering this year, and he gave an incredible presentation earlier today. And uh, who will be joining you on stage, Jim? This dude. Oh, <laughs> you look familiar. You look familiar. Well, anyway, give him one more round of applause. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. 
about or buffalo from a guy named dink roberts who's a black banjo player from chatham county north carolina i'm gonna play a new a new tune now uh one that i wrote uh it's called running home to doris and i wrote it for my grandmother who's uh this amazing woman I was telling you all about, about a little bit about my family earlier, but uh, my dad's from this tiny town called Smithfield, Virginia, uh, or was tiny at the time, it's less tiny now. But um, my father and his brothers grew up going to segregated schools, and my grandmother during their childhood was the kindergarten teacher at the church school that the community set up to make sure the kids would still get an education. And when integration eventually happened, she went back to school, she got her advanced degree, she kept teaching, she started raising money to get those black kids to college, get them back out of Smithfield. Uh, and my father and his, his generation were the first ones to, to have those doors open for them. And so much of that is due to, to my grandmother and to other amazing black women like her who took out the time and worked so hard to, to give us shoes to walk through the doors others had opened for us. So I wrote this one for her and she, she's having a rough time right now. So prayers for Grand Grand. <laughs> Grand Grand? I never know. <laughs> We're going to play a tune now that comes from Eden Hammonds, West Virginia fiddler. Uh, and it's called The Falls of Richmond. Thank you. 
you. Jake Blunt, ladies and gentlemen. Whereas uh, this banjo gathering was, was Jake's first banjo gathering, our next performer uh, was here from the very beginning, back in 1998. So if you could please make welcome from, from the region of East Kentucky, playing banjo since 1950, George Gibson. <laughs> Glad to be here. I've been moving hither and yon to get out of Florida the last two years. I haven't been practicing a lot. But what I'm going to do for you is play you some untamed uh, Southern banjo. Southern banjo was tamed twice. It was tamed in the minstrel era when professional northern minstrels reduced the music to European music notation and call it stroke style, and then later the three finger style was guitar style. Over 100 years later, young people from Boston, New York, urban areas moved south, created a music called Round Peak in the imitation of a great banjo player whom I knew, Kyle Creed. I'm going to play you some untamed southern music. I grew up in Knott County, and I'm going to play you two songs that give you some idea of the antiquity of the banjo in the south and the southern mountains. There was a category of banjo songs uh, called banjo songs, or as Dr. Josiah Combs from my county in Kentucky called them, banjo airs. You'd, I never heard them played without a banjo. And Pete Seeger said, you, and I'll paraphrase, you can trace the history of her country with some of her songs. Both of these songs. 